Hello, Fight fans. It's your weekly dose of Fight News Now. I'm John Pollock, and what a big show we have for you today. George St. Pierre will be by for an update. We're also going to hear from light heavyweight champion John Jones and a preview of this weekend's Fight Night card in Texas as John Ramdean and Robin Black will look ahead on three rounds. And we'll take a look at Far Cry 4 on the shift as we get things underway with this week's newsmakers. It has now been a full year since George St. Pierre last fought at UFC 167 in November of last year, where he edged past Johnny Hendricks before vacating his welterweight championship. This past weekend, he was in Toronto at the Gentlemen's Expo, and he spoke with our own Robin Black about what his last year has consisted of. When you uh, walked away from fighting for a little while, you talked about how being that obsessed with training was really tiring, but do you miss it now, the simplicity of just having one thing in your life to focus on? It's not much different. The only difference is that I'm doing it not for performance, I'm doing it for fun. And that's how it used to be in the beginning, but the pressure and everything and the, the, the critics and you know the, the, the money is involved and your career, it makes it in a way that you forgot that it's fun. You, you do it because you have to and, and, and it was very hard for me at the, at the time. I lost the, the pleasure, the fun of doing it. At the time, that some, I take some time now to really enjoy it and, and to, to, to feel the, the pleasure again, you know. Um, I think it's Bernard Hopkins who said, said the, a very good analogy. They asked him after one of his fights, he said, hey, are you going to retire now? He says, you cannot ask a, a, woman, who, a woman who just get, gave birth, who suffered for, many, for a long, long period of time, if she want to have another kid, you know. So you, same thing for me, you know, I, I, I just stopped now. But unfortunately, unfortunately, a few, a few a little time after I stopped, I, I got hurt. Now I focus on my rehab, and now it's time for me to enjoy. So um, I don't know if I will come back uh, or not, you know. But uh, if I do come back, I will make sure that I still have the fire, so I will be better and more hungry. This Saturday night, the UFC is right back at it with a fight night card from Austin, Texas and an important featherweight bout to headline the show. Cub Swanson takes his six-fight win streak into the octagon against former lightweight champion Frankie Edgar and could be the final test for Swanson before earning that elusive UFC title shot. First of all, give us your thoughts on the fight and how did you think the decision was going to go? Uh, you know, it's a close fight. I keep finding myself in these situations and uh, that's what it is, you know. Um, Congrats to Jose, he fought a great fight. That loss to featherweight champion Jose Aldo would be Edgar's third straight, all of them with a title on the line. The same style that had brought the answer to the pinnacle of the sport was now being blamed for his razor-thin decision losses. So after seven straight title fights, Edgar would be forced to work his way back up the featherweight ranks. In his first three-round fight since 2009, Edgar would take out exciting Brazilian Charles Oliveira in a fight of the night performance. Corners say we're not oh, sure we Frankie tagged him. The Toms River native then accepted a third fight with BJ Penn, as well as a coaching spot on The Ultimate Fighter. Team Edgar fighters would claim all four spots on the show's finale, and in the main event, the former lightweight champion would put a beating on Penn like no one else before him. Really putting the pressure on BJ Penn right now, landing shot after shot. And if BJ Penn doesn't work, Herb Dean is going to stop this fight. Frankie Edgar finishes the legend BJ Penn. That win would put him on the verge of another title shot, with one more obstacle in his way. Cub Swanson's tenure with the UFC has been nothing short of remarkable. Despite a loss to Ricardo Lamas in his first bout with the promotion, the Jackson Winkle John trained fighter has won six straight, with four of them coming by way of knockout. Pearson's hurt! And that's gonna do it! Swanson would be rewarded with the main event slot in his most recent bout, and use the opportunity to show that he has no problem going five rounds. Oh, Stevens is absorbing power shot after power shot now! While much has been made about Conor McGregor getting the next title shot in the featherweight division, it is clearly Edgar and Swanson who have the more impressive resumes. Can Edgar win and lock up his eighth career title fight? Or will lucky win number seven finally earn Swanson a shot at the champion? It has been three years since Swanson last tasted defeat, which came at the hands of Ricardo Lamas. Swanson works with some of the best talent in the industry at Jackson Winkle Johns in Albuquerque, and one of those teammates is light heavyweight king John Jones, who shared his thoughts on Cub Swanson. Cub Swanson is, is phenomenal. I tell him all the time that he's one of the best fighters in the gym. You know, sometimes I don't think he believes me. I think he's starting to believe me. I mean, I see him do extraordinary things. You know, the heavyweight 
classes are about two hours before the light the light weight classes, and uh, I always stay behind just to watch Club Swanson compete. He's just he's amazing, and, and uh, he's just capable of so much. He truly is a mixed martial artist, and uh, I cannot wait to watch him fight for a title. Nick Diaz was among those in attendance for the UFC's big press conference earlier this week. Diaz will return on January the 31st after close to a two-year layoff to meet Anderson Silva. Recently, George St. Pierre went on Chael Sonnen's podcast and discussed the fight and size difference between Silva and Diaz, which fired up the stock to Native when asked about those comments. Well, you know, I took the fight. Um, it's just more than I can say for George. He didn't want to take the fight. <laughs> but... But you know, you know, you, you gotta, you figure, you you know, you try to gain enough weight to go out there and hold your guy down. Maybe you can't do it. This was a bad idea. But I figure, you know, maybe I can make something happen for myself. Uh, we'll see. You know, George didn't take the fight though, so he is gonna run his mouth because he should have took the fight when he had the opportunity to take the fight. Now I take the fight, and he's running his mouth. You can look at it however you want, but. Um, you know, a fight's a fight, we're just, we're gonna have to have a fight at 185 pounds. We mentioned Ricardo Lamas as the last man to defeat Cub Swanson, and he earned another victory this past Saturday, submitting Dennis Bermudez and ending his seven-fight win streak. Now Lamas is targeting the most sought-after fighter at 145 pounds, Conor McGregor, who he feels should have to fight Lamas before earning a title fight in the weight division. As far as what's next, I want to get back to the title shot. You know what I mean? And uh, the biggest guy everybody's talking about in this in this featherweight division is Conor McGregor. I'd, I'd love a fight with him. I know he's matched up in January, but uh, you know if he wins that fight, uh, I think he needs to fight a wrestler like me before getting to the title. Conor McGregor is never one to shy away from public comments. He praised Dennis Bermudez even in defeat and then took to Twitter to share his unfiltered opinions of one Ricardo Lamas criticizing his performance from earlier this year when he fought Jose Aldo at UFC 169 and took a decision loss. And Lamas wasn't the only featherweight targeted by McGregor this week as he ran through and ran down the majority of the top fighters at 145 pounds at this past week's press conference. And here's McGregor's breakdown of the top contenders in his weight division. You know, all I'm looking for is a simple thank you. Maybe a kiss on the toes. If you look back at the last uh, featherweight contest in Mexico, it was between a guy who, who had a horrendous fight against Jose Aldo, Ricardo Lamas. He fought like a pussy. He ran for five rounds. And then you look at Dennis Bermudez, who's on a false win streak. Holloway beat him. So these are two average, okay, Johnny men fighters. Yet there was so much light on that fight. Dennis is a decision machine, and Ricardo's fought like a pussy. People are even talking about Nick Lentz. Frankie has, has held a lightweight title. He's challenged at a high level his whole career. He, he, he fights with his heart, but again, he's an aging competitor. He's on the downside of his career. I think that's an accurate assessment. The same with Cub, I believe he's, he's aging. He looks 95 years old, I say it every time. But for me personally, you know, I have nothing against Frankie. I respect his style, but I would like Cub to win for the specific reason that he seems to think that he has been promised a UFC title shot if he wins uh, this fight against Frankie. So I want, to, I want him to win that contest and then I will bake a freshly made pie and smack him clean in the face with it when, when I get the title shot. I will use my movement to freeze Dennis, I believe. He's a compact fighter as it is. Um, I will use my movement to freeze him and then I will take his head clean off and raise it in beautiful Boston City, you know, Ireland number two, I like to call it. And then, you know, it's on to, it's on to big business. Jose will, will be told what to do. He will, he, he will uh, be told he must fly economy to Ireland, fill out an 80,000-seater football stadium, break records, highest gate, highest attendance, highest pay-per-view, and then he will hand over that belt on home soil. They can say all they want, but they're up here, they're trying to talk like I'm trying to talk, they're rocking the suits and everything, you know what I mean? But there is only one. Let's see by the end of 2015. Let's see who has the highest pay-per-view numbers. Let's see who has the highest gate. Let's see who has the highest attendance. You know, because I am setting up for that and, and we are in talks for big, big things. So again, I won't look past Dennis. I will look through him exactly where I plan on going and then, and then carry on. But I believe 2015 will be my year. Um, I know a lot of the featherweights are bitching and moaning and hating on it, you know, but they, they don't have to uh, love it. They, they can even hate it, but they, they will be forced to accept it. 
And we just heard from Conor McGregor, whose shadow I'm sure will be looming over this Saturday's main event between Cub Swanson and Frankie Edgar. This is a really interesting fight night card. A lot of interesting different fights on this card. Joseph Benavidez back, Matt Wyman returning on Saturday, and you guys have the whole preview coming up. Yeah, I think it's one of the must-see cards of the year. You look at the main event, outstanding matchup that definitely does have title implications. We all anticipate it could be fight of the night and possibly fight of the year, but I think there's so many fights on the undercard. There are a couple of guys that could steal the thunder of the main event. Jared Rochelle, Alexei <laughs> Olenek, <laughs> fight of the year coming up. Robin Black and John Ramdeen have your full preview as Fight News Now continues.